jump right in and talk a little bit about match total exposure in Lightroom. What exactly is this, Stephen? So this is something that it's it's built right into Lightroom, and I can't believe that I've overlooked it for so long. Um, literally, what it does is it will uh, take the mean, the arithmetic mean, and average out all the exposures of the selected photos. So you'll uh, shift click or command click which photos you want to match, and it will just average them out. Um, it's in the develop panel under settings, and you just uh, click on the images that you want to match and then just hit match total exposure. Um, so if you're shooting, if you're shooting in uh, aperture priority or shutter priority, or you've got a situation where you have a lot of uh, varying, uh, varying levels of exposure, like you're going indoors to outdoors or, or it's, it's a, a very uh, dynamic um, lighting experience. You can, instead of finding all the photos that are in uh, one range, you can just select all of them, match total exposure, and it gets you pretty close. I mean, it's not going to dial you in on each one, but it gets you really, really close to the So, ballpark. So let me jump in on that. So I can mm. do this the way that we normally do this. If I want to, you know, sync my exposure between a number, number of images is I'm just going to select all the images, highlight mm -hmm. first one and last one while holding shift. I got all my Im images selected that have different exposures. Right. Um, and, you know, let's say we're shooting in auto mode or uh, aperture priority, and there's slight differences in the exposure between each shot. Right. So normally we would just uh, go into our develop module and then we'd sync them. You know, we'd move the exposure and, and make sure our sync is chosen. And when you move the exposure on one, you can move them on, on all. But the problem right. is some of them are off because they're brighter. Some of them are off because they're darker. It's not exactly. all the same direction. So you go to settings and then match total exposures, and then whichever one you have highlighted as your main photo right now, you have all of them selected, but one highlighted, and now it's gonna go to all the other photos, and it's gonna go as much as possible, make them have the same exposure as that. Exactly, and it's a great, I mean, it's don't, I wouldn't do it and just do match total exposure and then call it a day, but if you're gonna be calling a lot of photos, um, instead of going up and down and up and down, this is going to get you really close to the ballpark. And then you can start doing your, your fine tuning on each one. So how that. is it working? Do you know how it works? I mean, is it taking the histogram from the one that you have highlighted and it's trying to make a similar histogram or, or is it taking your camera settings from there? there how is it exactly doing it? I, now, now I'm not the computer engineer that figured it out, but my, my guess is there has to be an algorithm, a weighted algorithm that's taking um, taking exactly where most of the weight in that histogram is and assigning a value to that and then putting some sort of arithmetic mean to it. So you get mo so if you tend to be uh, just slightly towards the right in your chosen uh, exposure that you want to match, then it starts to move all of them towards that. Now, that means if you have a lot of photos that are underexposed, it's going to be bringing up the total exposure. So you might be getting a lot of noise in the background that you don't necessarily want if you originally underexposed that photo. But I think what it's going to do is it's going to bring up the uh, the general level of the photo sites so that overall you're hitting a generalized level that that evens out. So if you're if you're getting pretty close on the day on location, when you finally come back into your uh, to your Lightroom, you're going to get them pretty on the spot. Yeah, and it's not it's not moving anything except the exposure slider. Uh, it's exactly. only moving that exposure slider. It's not you know saying ooh highlights up, shadows down. It's not quite that smart. It's just taking the exposure slider and saying where should the exposure slider on be on this photo to make it the most like that other photo. So what's right. the use case for this? I mean, is this something you think you'll be using regularly, or or how you can we make use of it? It is. I mean, one of the things I find is I use if I'm if I'm doing a, a, a large set. If I'm if I'm delivering a large set of photos, um, one of the things that I'll do is I'll I'll, I'll have some pre-made presets that I that I generally like to go to. A lot of them are film emulation presets that I'll tweak a little bit. Um, the one thing that they don't really touch in these presets is the exposure or the contrast. Um, to really get these presets to sing, you really got to get uh, the exposure and contrast kind of dialed in ahead of time. So what I do now is match total exposure, 
then throw the presets on, sync all the presets, ah. and then I'm in a place where I can really start to tweak the photos. Okay, now that's a cool use for this. Uh, yeah, and I have that. Uh, I That happens to me all the time because I obviously use presets a lot in my workflow uh, that they'll, you know, if you apply it to some from this wedding or this portrait shoot or whatever, and it's looking better and others not so good just because there are lots of variations in the ways yeah. that I was composing it or whatever. So, I mean, it's still not going to be perfect, but it, it's it's going to get me there a lot quicker. Uh, and that's the whole purpose of presets, right? It's quickness. Right. So if, it, if this is a, a step that can make that more efficient, that's pretty cool. Good tip. Thanks.